Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, the Sens avoided disaster after blowing a three-goal third-period lead. They beat the Philadelphia Flyers 5-4 in overtime. Meow. And we have fellow goalie hugger Jamie McLennan on the show. Noodles has a fun chat with us all about young goalies and a whole lot more. All that plus, how did Tyler Clevin look? What's next? The Ottawa Senators playing back-to-back games this weekend. That's all coming up. You're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 768 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe every video at Locked On Senators or join us on your favorite audio podcast platform. Today is Friday, March 31st, and Pilsy, who would have guessed it that the man Tyler Clevin was intimidated meeting for the first time in the locker room, Claude Giroux, that he would assist on his goal for his first National Hockey League point. Not only his first National Hockey League point, but his first National Hockey League win also. The Ottawa Senators are undefeated with Tyler Clevin in the lineup. And he played well. He had to play more than I think DJ Smith and the coaching staff wanted to see from him. The rookie, number 43, played in 17 minutes and 33 seconds. Even had 14 seconds to finish off a power play. I laughed when both he and Nick Holden were out there for the offensive zone draw. But all in all, a very solid debut. Unfortunately, an injury to Travis Hamanick in the first period on the play where the Sens scored their first goal. The reason for that in Pilsy. Awful news, not only with Travis Hamanick, but with Derek Broussard. The veteran forward went down and it did not look good. We're recording late after the postcast. And DJ Smith just told the media that it seems like they are going to be out long term. Yeah, I mean, the the Derek Broussard one especially, like I wouldn't be surprised if that requires some sort of surgery or it's uh, multiple weeks, maybe even months that he's out. So just tough to see that, especially when he's trying to ride off into the sunset here and uh, one more big injury for Broussard. So we're hoping the best for him. And then Hamannick, that's a tough play. Like you can't really uh, blame the flyer player there. I forget who clipped him, but he just clips his leg up against the boards and that's tough. So two veteran guys that go down in this game and Ross, you mentioned it so strange that both of those injuries result in a goal happening, happening moments later. This game was weird, wacky, wild. Any adjective you want to describe, you can put to it because Cam Talbot was was pretty bad in goal for the Ottawa Senators. Rock 66% save percentage. Not great. Nope. The Ottawa Senators throw everything on goal. They had 35 more shots than the Philadelphia Flyers. The shots on goal were 46 to 11. The Sens power play goes one for three. The Flyers go two for two on the man advantage in this game, but physicality, you had Alex DeBrinkett and Joel Farabee. Who had that on the fight card coming into tonight's game, last night's game? Nobody, I would imagine. But this was just, it was a win, but it was much uglier than it needed to be. Yeah, like the Ottawa Senators should not have had to go to extra time for this. Now, the one thing that is important to remember is those two injuries happen. The Hamnick one happens early, and then Cassie's out of the game as well. So you got you're down three men on this uh, this game. So as it gets longer and longer, your legs are going to get more tired, and you got a guy playing in his first ever NHL game to add to that, but. I think the Ottawa Senators should feel very lucky that they were able to come away with two points here because they just fell apart in the third period. And not even so much with possession or or pace or anything like that, just three terrible, terrible goals that end up tying this one. Oh, Oh my God. So obviously, Matt Sogard's your guy Saturday, right? Big time Matt Sogard's my guy Saturday, yes. Yeah. How about Sunday? 
Like, is it too late to get Fergie back up here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not crazy to to say, hey, what's Fergie up to? Let's hey, go. What's, what's Levy Marilinen up to? No kidding. Yeah, yeah. But what's uh, up to? Can you get the trend? <laughs> Yikes. I don't think I want to see Cam Talbot in goal this weekend. No, he's got to play in, in that Columbus game in my mind. Okay. If, if he lays an egg in that one. We're done. That, that's going to be a tough conversation. Yeah. Yeah, we're done. Especially on the day that rumors come out that he's looking for a payday. Okay. All right. We'll find out. But, hey, we kind of moved off it a little bit too quick. And we covered a lot of this in the postcast. Please yeah. go check that out wherever Over you Over an hour long. And everyone was being extremely generous. We can't yes. thank you. It's such an amazing community. Whether you just listen to the, the dance show, whether you pop in every once in a while, or if you're locked on to the postcast after each and every Ottawa Senators game where we're lucky enough to have a great crew with Jack Richardson and at Aleem's Martian who jump on. But last night, it was just the fellas. Just Pilsy and I chatting it up. And uh, I would recommend that for a deep dive on Tyler Clevin's game. But, dude, one game, one point. Like, you look good, man. That's great. That's exactly the confidence booster that he needed after a, a tough first shift, too. And Ross, not, not only that uh, tough first shift guy goes down, but he has to deal with multiple different defense partners here, which for a guy going into his first game with a new team in a new country in a new league like that is a whirlwind of events for him to deal with. And he did he did pretty well, if you ask me. So I'm excited that Tyler Clevin is here and obviously Injuries to Chikrin, Shabbat, and Hamannick is not the way you wanted to see Tyler Clevin being inserted into this lineup. But when certain doors close, another one opens, and Tyler Clevin's getting a big opportunity here. And the opportunity has evolved into, yeah, you guessed it, Tyler Clevin gets the goggles in the locker room after this game. We had to have some fun on social media at Send Central. Looking at those draft rankings like... Man, it's hot. Burning hot takes. You need some goggles to cover that. The tanning goggles need to protect you from seeing do not draft next to Tyler Clevin's name. Chew, chew. Can we get the can we get the chew or what? Yeah, hit it. Okay, hit it with the Thank you. Tyler Clevin. Uh, Ross, re- reverse uh alternate reality tweet is you could also do Tyler Clevin looking at his future because he's so blinded with how bright that future is gonna be. He has to wear goggles. Very good stuff for Tyler Clevin tonight. And we're looking forward to Saturday. Who do you call up to replace Travis Hamnick? Because right now that sends decor with Nick Holden, with Tyler Clevin. All of a sudden, no Shabbat, no Hamnick. Now you're going to have to go into your prospect pool once again or down on the farm. Uh, I would love for it to be Lassie Thompson. Give him a chance at the end of the season here. Right hand shot, a guy that can move the puck up the ice. Something that the Ottawa Senators need right now. But, Ross, it's probably going to be Dylan Hetherington. Is is he healthy? I'm pretty sure Hetherington's yeah. healthy. Yeah. yeah, he's healthy. He could be the guy. But it, you need you probably want a right shot because Zub's their That's only fair. right shot defenseman right now. Yep, that is definitely a factor. So, Lassie Thompson. Let's see the Tom Bomb. Cla- the K-Train and the Tom Bomb on the third pair. Wow. That's super sweet. I'm down with that. I was <laughs> Let's do it. But then, what do you want, that? Or do you want four note accents in the lineup? That's kind of cool, too. That's kind of yeah, cool that's too. decent. Why not both? Why not both? But the youth is exceptional as they're producing night in, night out. Tim Stutzla, goal and an assist tonight. The kid has 37 tucks on the year. My favorite storyline, and nobody's surprised to hear this. Yeah, Claude Giroux, another goal tonight. Five points away from 1,000 with seven games remaining. It's going to be a super. I hope he does it with us in the crowd. Wouldn't that just be poetic? That would be absolutely amazing if he did that. But Ross, as as a uh, proclaimed cat guy, Whoa. my story of the game, Alex to break it. Oh yeah. my God, I did not know that cat had the dog in him. That was an amazing scrap. And he doesn't just hang in there. He was taking control of that fight up against Joel Faraby. And I've never seen so many players go to a guy in the box after a fight and give him props. Let him know, hey, we love to see that. Matthew Joseph was loving it on the bench. All the boys were fired up. And not only does Alex Dabrinka get in the scrap there, but he scores the overtime game-winning goal as well. So I thought it was another great one from the Cat. 
meow. Oh my God, what a night! Resign the cat, resign the cat. Money is nothing but an object, and that entertainment never dies. So I need more. I need more cat in my life. And I'm speaking as not a cat guy. So sure. when that when I say these words, I mean them. But hell of a game from Alex to Brinkett and the cat after the game says that he wishes Claude Giroux got credit for the overtime winner because he hounded the puck and made Felix Sandstrom make a boneheaded decision and put it right on the cat's tape. Like, you couldn't ask for a better opportunity. And there's been times when DeBrinckit's missed those types of opportunities this year, but now he's got four goals in his last four games. And, yeah, the Sens are 19-1-1 in the 21 games that he scored a goal. Love that. you love to see that. You absolutely love to see it. I think everyone's going to love Jamie Noodles McLennan. Now, we mentioned this at the end of the postcast, but I want to let everyone know. If you're listening, there's nothing that you're going to notice different in your audio podcast player. The quality of our interview with Jamie McLennan is very good. However, if you watch us on YouTube, one, thank you. We appreciate that. And two, we have to apologize. There was a bit of a technical difficulty that we didn't realize until after the recording was complete or else we would have fixed it and stopped the interview and started it back up. However, there's no record scratches, Pillsy. There's no, it's just consistently about two seconds behind what he looks at. So maybe have it open in a tab that you're not glued into maybe, but it's weird because you and I are, are right on time. Yeah. I don't really know the, 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 technical aspects of why it happened is just at some point in the interview noodles camera and internet lagged and he stopped and instead of the audio catching up or the video coming back in sync with the fast forward it just stays off time for the rest of the interview so a little bit disappointing because we we love having noodles on and uh, i think the youtube is good because you get to see his reactions and we have a lot of laughs as well but just know that going in that uh, that was out of our control, unfortunately, but still a great interview. Exactly. Like it's not enough of a deterrent deterrent to not use the interview. It, it would be yeah. robbing you guys of a great conversation. And I think that uh, everyone should be understanding of it. And it's interview on YouTube, Pilsy. I, I know we did this recently. What was it? 71 interviews we've done on YouTube. Gotta be at wow. least. Jamie Noodles McLennan. What an absolute beauty. Let's get to that. And then right after the interview, we'll quickly touch on the weekend coming up. The Senators are playing the Leafs on Saturday and the Columbus Blue Jackets on the road on Sunday. That's all coming up. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Fan Duel. They are the number one sportsbook in North America. They are the official trusted partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And they are partnered with so many leagues because they do it better than anyone else. I love the FanDuel app. It's simple, safe, secure, easy to use. And Ross, I've been talking about this all season long. The first of five shots, the Ottawa Senators hit that. They outshot the Philadelphia Flyers 16-2 to in the first period. So you knew that one was a good one, that's for sure. But there's more than just prop bets. You can do money line, puck line, spreads. You can do same game parlays for a bigger chance at a bigger payout. And if you're new to FanDuel, this is the time to join. You get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. $1,000 back in bonus bets if your bet doesn't win. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 bonus bets if your first bet loses. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NHL. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You know how much we love our friends at the Glebe Central Pub, and we do it for good reason as well. Our friends at the Glebe Central Pub not only make sure that they have the most welcoming environment in the city, whether you're going there for open mic night, live music, anything that gets the blood flowing at the pub, they got it at the Glebe Central Pub. Darts, great bar activity. You can play some darts at the Glebe Central Pub. You can do it all at 779 Bank Street. And when you go, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. They're also huge Sens fans, so they have a shuttle that goes to and from the CTC for just $15. So head to GlebeCentralPub.com and reserve your tickets today. The bus leaves the Glebe Central Pub one hour before puck drop, and it will pick you up at the same drop-off location 10 minutes after the final horn. So enjoy the Sens win and then get to the shuttle. It takes you right back to the Glebe Central Pub. Where's the Glebe Central Pub? 
Oh, glad you asked. The Glebe Central Pub is at 779 Bank Street. And when you head there, just let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, let's get to our interview with TSN analysts and still suspended NHL goalie. Here's Jamie Noodles McLennan. All right, we now welcome back a very special guest. It's been a long time since we caught up with our favorite goalie hugger, a longtime NHLer and now TSN analyst. It's Jamie McLennan. Noodles, welcome back to Locked On Senators. How you doing, man? Not too bad. How's everybody doing today? Uh, we're doing fantastic. Always a great day. We can talk with another member of the goalie community. But before we get to that, I want to start with your broadcasting career right now because the pandemic, obviously, you're grounded. You're working from home. The studio looks great, by the way, behind you. But now that you're back in the swing of things, travel's completely opened up. Is your schedule back to as hectic as it was before? It, it, it is yes and no. And what I mean by that is you've got a situation where you know, hey, for example, today I'm in studio. So all of a sudden I got to leave earlier. You've got to plan the commute. You've got to do all these things where um, I got a little lazy. I'll be honest. I think there's a lot of broadcasters that got lazy because they're out there in their sweatpants um, at home. And, you know, you've got your, you can put a tie on, you can do all things kind of, you know, business up top, party in the bottom type of thing. And that's, uh, that's where a lot of broadcasters got lazy, including myself. Believe me, I'm not uh, throwing stones here. So uh, there is advantages to being in studio and being at home. If your rig is a good setup at home, I do like working from home. I've got young kids, uh, get an opportunity to, to spend a lot more time with them where I, I'm not on that commute. I live about 40 minutes from the studio. So all of a sudden you take 80 minutes out of your day. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot. Uh, and plus, like, as you guys know, doing color, I do 40 games for uh, the Senators. So I'm 20 in Ottawa, 20 on the road. So you're, every game's a, a road game for me, um, even though I'm familiar with Ottawa and up there quite a bit. It's just, uh, um, it's exciting. But again, it takes away from, you know, your, or it adds to your travel schedule and your workload. So uh, it's good, a little bit of both. And I've got a good mix of everything. So I'm not complaining. Is uh, there a room in the Mathot Manatic Mansion for you saved? I would hope so. Our friend of the show, he's a nice guy. He doesn't take you in? I, I mean, he's never offered. I feel like he has some, like, compound where <laughs> even I could live above the garage if I had to. I like, like he, <laughs> he, 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 Every time I see on his Instagram, he's got, like, I think he's got some land there. I think he lives out in Canada or somewhere, but um, I'm sure I could even pull a trailer in there if I had to. But uh, There we go. I, I, I enjoy uh, staying in a hotel downtown and kind of getting the, the downtown life a little bit going. So it's uh, I'm pretty comfortable when I'm up in Ottawa. Yeah, we love having you for Sens games. Now, when you're doing uh, your home office stuff, have you ever had any um, issues with uh, the kids barging in or uh, anything like, like that famous uh, news interview where he's talking about a serious <laughs> political issue and his kid just kind of runs in there? Or how, how do you manage that aspect? I had to install a lock on that door because <laughs> I've got a five-year-old son. I call him the little Billy goat. And I've got, okay. uh, I've got a, a door that has a glass, you know, window in it. And there's times I'll be on air and I will look and I just see this little face peeking in and like <laughs> waving and I'll give him like a little wave, like kind of underneath the, yeah. underneath the camera. But for the most part, they're pretty good. Okay. Um, once in a while, like a couple, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was about a month ago, um, kind of joined in my office. We have a playroom on the other side and I heard a giant thud and I'm like, oh, that's not sound good. And there was some, you know, screaming and crying. And of course I'm yammering on about something who knows on air. So I'm like, I got to wait till a break to go out and figure out what happened. And of course my wife had some ice on his neck or ice on his shoulder because he fell off something or oh, whatever, no. but but it happens, but I, I do enjoy working from home again, having the luxury of seeing them, but uh, there, it can be slightly distracting if they are in the house and yelling and screaming or chasing them each other around. Cause I got a 10 year old daughter as well too. Are either of them getting interested in strapping the pads on like their old man? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I, my little man is five and they, they kind of, this is his first year of hockey and, He's just loving it. And we've got a good setup here and, and they rotate the pads and he went in one nice. day and we've been working in the basement a little bit. And, and I was just telling him like, not a lot of people raise the puck. So see if you could take Smart. away the ice. And 
So it was pretty funny. He was, he poke checked the kid. I'm like, Oh my God, he's, you know, he's poke checking and being aggressive out there. And, you know, he looked like he had some decent mechanics, but it was kind of funny because the parents were like, you know, maybe he should play more. And I'm like, no, no, he needs to learn how to skate. He needs to do all these things that young kids should do before they get locked into a position. So he has played goal twice and, you know, he has a little bit of mechanics, but I, I still want him to be just a player and, and to have fun and stay out of all the politics stuff. You're hearing stories every day of like, you know, parents and, and people going crazy about stuff. I'm going to be the opposite. I would hope I just sit with my headset on and watch him. I listen to music and, uh, you both know my wife, she's the fiery one. So she would be the emotional one at the rink, but outside of, outside of that, I'm enjoying it, but I, we'll see where it goes. He's five and, and nobody plans their career. At yeah, five. that's fair. I mean, the Ottawa Senators have had some very young, inexperienced goalies. Now, I don't know if your son would, uh, meet the requirements, maybe as an e-bug, we'll, we'll keep him ready there for the Ottawa Senators, but <laughs> I wanted to get your opinion on especially when there's two young goalies in uh, Ottawa and Mad Sogard and Kevin Mandelese because of injury. What do you think that is like for two young guys? Because normally it's one young guy being brought up with a veteran, you know, like uh, Mads is with yep. Cam Talbot or something. And you can lean on that veteran for advice. And, you know, you've got a stable guy there that has the experience. But when it's just two young guys like that, have you ever been a part of uh, a young goalie tandem like that? And d just what do you think the dynamic is between those two uh, as that's going on? Well, I, you know, you bring it up. I think the word would be overwhelming. And I say that respectfully because, you know, if you look at Matt Sogard and if you sat down with general manager Pierre Dorian, I think the projection for him would be, hey, let's get him to Belleville and play a ton of games this year. And we'll have, we'll have Anton play and we'll have – can, can play and outside of that you know just let him grow now all of a sudden you get the injuries to both of them he gets placed in a situation where some nights he looks like hey you know what I'm a world beater because I do believe he has NHL talent but then other nights he looks overwhelmed because there is that market correction there is like hey can I do this every night at 22 years old because it takes the physical and mental maturation process to go through there's no secret that you see goalies nowadays get really good at 25, 26, 27 because they're physically stronger, but they're mentally stronger as well to handle the duress. So I think he's done a really good job, but I also think it's been, you know, you've been pressed into a situation where he might look back the summer and go, what the hell was that? Like, man, I just was, you know, it was, and, and then they had the march of death, you call it, where it was like, oh, let's play. Edmonton, Tampa, Boston, Carolina, like it wasn't, there wasn't teams where you kind of on paper were like, hey, this is kind of an even matchup. It's like, we're punching above our weight right now. And, you know, we need him to be at his best. So, and then Kevin Mandelazi, same situation. Like, you know, these are goaltenders that are, you guys would use the term, I'm sure, raw. Like they're, you, you, you know, they've got ability, but again, the process, the maturation process, you can't just, May, wave a magic wand and have them become more mature. You got to allow them to go through the process. We've seen it the last three years with Tim Stutzla. He's growing up and right in front of our eyes. And you're like, man, this guy is a superstar. But, you know, the first, you know, let's say the first season, there were things where you're like, you know that it's in there, but you're seeing some immature play out there. Same thing with Sogard and Mandelazi. And the unfortunate part is it's, you're in a playoff race. So you're relying on those kids to kind of, you know, call on their talent every night. So it, I, I, I feel for them, but I think they've done a very good job based on circumstance. But, you know, seeing that, you know, Talbot is back and I hope, I believe hopefully starting here, uh, that's going to take a lot of pressure off because I do believe in a young player playing with a veteran guy. It, it happened to me early in my career. I was 21, 22 playing with Ron Hextall, who was 30. Wow. Hexy's like, hey, I, you know, I know the ropes. So, yeah, that was my That's first crazy. goalie partner. That's probably the, first story. the art of the two hander, which goes yeah. from your first all the way to your last game of the career. <laughs> I guess, I mean, you know, that one might have been Hexy. I don't know. That was, uh, uh, again, that was a, a weird transaction how how it went down. But uh, ultimately, I, I do say this, and I saw Hexy about a month ago when Ottawa played Pittsburgh, and we had a good chat. Like he was such an unbelievable mentor for me. I, 
I never knew what it was like to work hard and to, you know, turn the corner as a pro until I met Ron Hextall because that guy came to play every night and he worked hard. And, you know, a lot of the details of his preparation, I incorporated into my game as I kind of grew up as a player. So um, unbelievable mentor for me. And, and that's where you're talking about a guy like Sogard, if he could play with a guy like Cam Talbot or Anton Forsberg, guys who've been around the block, you can pick up on little details of things, not even the play on the ice. It's just the preparation, how you carry yourself, the work in practice. Those are the things that you learn from a guy who's been around the block. And I certainly learned it from Ron and, and, you know, other players that I played with, even Roberto Luongo was a great mentor and Grant Fear I played with. I played with some pretty good goaltenders. I was different stuff and Roman Turk. Yeah. Large man. That guy was such a big goaltender. Um, but anyways, like I was lucky to try and take a little piece of everything. And you hope that Mandalazi and Sogard uh, are, have at least enjoyed the process because I, I feel that they've been under the gun. Especially a lot. that one stretch Matt Sogard had that, where it was just four goals against for a number of teams, five or six in yeah. a row. And I thought you guys actually did a great breakdown on TSN where you talked about how a large percent of those goals were coming in the first 10 minutes of a period, right? And hot. Yeah, early and in, the, in the yeah, period too. Yeah. I found, like it's almost like once these young guys can settle in, even if it's in a period or a game or a career type thing, that it does take a little while. But if you can prove to yourself you've done it, well, there you go again. But also Dylan Ferguson, we didn't mention another young guy kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Now, do you think, and again, these guys are all 22. You mentioned at the same age that you were when you started. Is there an ignorance factor in there where you're just like, I'm thrown in here no matter what. Like, I don't know the difficulty in front of me, is that a goalie kind of thought process or are you kind of looking across? And if you're Dylan Ferguson saying, yeah, that's Sidney Crosby, that's Evgeny Malkin warm up. <laughs> well, I, I would like to use the word oblivious because all of a sudden you, you know, ignorance is like, cause I, it almost sounds like they're, they're being sharp where, where I, you're oblivious until you, the lights go on and you're like, holy, like you're right. That's Sidney Crosby. My first NHL game um, you get out there and you played in the minors and you played in big games throughout your career. And all of a sudden you're playing in the NHL and the lights are brighter and there's crowd, there's a big crowd and there's like a buzz, like a hum it, when you're out on the ice and you're right. Like my first game was against the Calgary flames. So I look at, Oh, there's Theo Fleury. Oh, there's Joe Newendike. It's my job to try and stop them. And, you know, Ferguson looking down and Sid is, is winding it up or Gino or all of a sudden it's on the power play and you're looking over here. Like it just, I would like to say that either ignorant or oblivious to the, the magnitude of the situation. And then all of a sudden you just start playing like your heart's pumping and you're like, Hey, let's, let's, let's see, you know, the puck's the same size, the net's the same size. Um, you know, I remember my first shift in the NHL, everything was moving so fast and I got scored on early in the game, I think about five minutes in. And I think it was Neuendijk that got a rebound. And I was like, this is too fast. I don't know if I can handle this pace. And like, my mind was moving a million miles an hour. And then you start making some saves. And, you know, thank God it was like some routine saves, some farther out angle, you know, you're in pretty good position. And you're like, okay, maybe there's a chance. Like, maybe there's a chance. Like, second period, I remember stopping like flurry on a breakaway. And I'm like, you know, guy tried to move. I, I reacted to it, made a pretty yep. good save. I'm like, hey, that's – they're in flurry. That guy's a hell of a player. So you kind of – you get in your own mind, but then you start to remember, like, it's still a game. Yeah, these guys are the best ever, or arguably the best ever in a guy like Sidney Crosby, but you start to worry about your game. So I watched Dylan Ferguson that night, and you could tell right away he was comfortable. I don't know what was going on inside, but from the outside – he look, he look I was going to say we do because we had his mental skills coach on the next day. Have you ever heard of, of, of those guys? That, they're making more and more of noise, I think. But would you have ever seen one when you were playing, like around the locker room, where guys talking about seeing people to be mentally sharp? Yes. I mean, late 90s, I started working with um, a mental skills coach named Max Offenberger. And I do believe Max, he works uh, – uh, for the Boston Bruins, I, I believe, I, I think. But he's worked for Tampa. He's worked for a lot. And he's kind of this legendary guy in the Boston area. And he, he was working with Grant Fear. And I met him when I played in St. Louis. And then I knew I was going to an expansion team. So I, I figured it was going to be a struggle to go from a first place team to a last place team. So I hired him. 
And he gave me some great like insight uh, to the point where like I have tattoos oh, on wow. my wrists um, and, and I have like all these trigger point names and, or sayings and stuff like that. I used them uh, throughout my career to kind of like help balance and calm myself down. And now I just an old guy with tattoos that I cover up uh, for my, and tell my kids not to get them. What's, a favorite, what's, <laughs> but, what's uh, your favorite saying? Like what's the most powerful one that got you refocused? Perspective. Okay. Like, honestly, like it was, I would call him after, and th- you know, you're going through personal yep. stuff too. You know, you lose a relationship or something like that. So it's not just like, Hey, I lost two, one tonight. I got to call this guy. It's like, how do you get back to being balanced, right? And that was the one of the things. So I would call him and, you know, kind of go through layout, kind of what I was going through. And he would always come at it with a different way and say, okay, let me get this straight. Like, and then he would kind of come back at me and go, okay, so um, are you healthy? I'm like, yeah, you know, like uh, your family love you? And I'm, yeah, I think so. You know, like uh, you got friends? I'm like, yeah what the hell are you complaining to me about? Like he would always come at like, you know, like at a different angle as to like, Hey, let's have a reset here. You know, like, and I'll say what he was saying. He he goes, don't piss and moan to me about this and this, you know, be happy for what you are, what what you have. Cause he goes, you know, you want real perspective? Go, go visit, uh, go visit a child in, uh, in, in the hospital. You know, you want, go, go visit this person, go, go see what this person's going through. So to me, sorry, my phone's acting up, but I, but to me, um, he always just tried to have a, a reset and a rebalance. So that was the type of stuff that I, it helped me moving forward. Um, and I think there are, you know, skills coaches and mental coaches and all that, that um, I have a, I, a, an acquaintance, a guy, John Stevenson, I know who worked with uh, Ray okay. Holtby. And I think he works with Carter Hart. And he works with a lot of guys out West. And John was a, a goalie coach that transitioned into, you know, I think he, he, he attacked it in the psychologist side or the, the psyche of the goaltending. And he's done a very good job uh, with a lot of goaltenders. So it is part of the package. Um, when I was 17 years old, it's crazy. I read a book called Peak Performance. Okay. I was given to it and it was this mental skills coach. And the guy, at, it, like in the book, it asked you to write down goals, what yep. you wanted and what you could see. And I swear to God, I found it in my storage not that long ago. Um, I wrote a sheet down. It was like, I want to be in the NHL by the time I'm 22. I want to do these things. And I wanted to win something. I wanted to win top goalie in the Western Hockey League. I had all these like personal goals. And it was funny. Like I actually achieved uh, a bunch of them. And it was like either, you know, it was kind of mental preparation stuff. But that was like, you know, I'm 51 years old. That was like old school stuff. I can't imagine what they're doing nowadays. It's probably so progressive, but um, I do believe in it. So that was a long answer. I apologize, but I, I do believe in that stuff. Yeah, it's it's important for goalies. And uh, it, it doesn't matter where you are in your career as a goalie. The mental aspect is a big part of it. Now, uh, I wanted to ask you about what's going on in the crease with the Ottawa Senators. I think that's one of the burning questions here for this off season. And how do you feel about, their situation like would you be comfortable if they just let Talbot walk and you have Forsberg and you've seen enough of Sogard is that something that you're comfortable with the Sens moving forward a Forsberg Sogard tandem or do you think they got to bring another guy in to let Sogard have a little more time in Belleville I, I just I think you have to give yourself the opportunity to do that I would much rather have too many and then make decisions yeah. after that as to a point where it's like, hey, we got to, you know, now we're struggling, we got an injury, and now we've got to grab somebody off waivers and do this and that. I think this team is at a point now where that position can't have a question mark in it because the D doesn't have a question mark. That top four is as good as, you know, anybody when you start, when you get them playing. Like, I, you guys know, I think Sanderson's a star. He might be the best out of all of them when, hmm. when this is done. So you got, you got, you know, Shabbat, Sanderson, and Chikrin – and Zub, who's on term. And then if you're going to bring ha- Hamannick back, um, you know, if Bernard Docker can settle in, if Brandstrom can, like now you can, you've got options there, right? So the D at least looks pretty good on paper, health, you know, withstanding. And the same thing with the forwards. You've got decision with the but outside of that, like you've got guys, you're going to get your, 
I don't know what you what you believe Norris is going to be. Is he going to be your number two because Stutzla's yeah. your number one? But either way, you're going to have Norris, Stutzla, Pinto, Ridley, Greg. If if Greg isn't, you know, need a little bit more season because he might. He needs a good summer of working out. Um, I grew up with his dad, so I know that family very well. Uh, I have no doubt he's going to be a really good NHL player, but he might need you know, a half a season in the minors just to continue to grow as a player. The bottom line is you look at the spine of your team. The one thing you want is consistency back there as to like, I don't have a question mark. Like I've got, you know, I've got 82 games covered with health because this guy can play 40 and this guy can play 40 or this guy can play 50 and this guy can play 30. But to me, if you've got a question mark and there's like a wish and hope and all of that type of stuff, it doesn't like, I don't know how you guys feel, but I don't think it bodes well for the confidence of like the guys in front of you going, Hey, we like our D we like the depth of our forwards and the skill of our forwards, but we're not a hundred percent sure what we got there. And I like Anton Forsberg, but I think he's a, just a good tandem goaltender. And, and really if, if you had a, a, a stud, he'd be a really quality backup. But I, I think he's a kind of like that, you know, a two, but a solid two that can give you starter minutes. So you know, you've got Forsberg, you've got uh, Sogard, who's shown he can play, but maybe it's the luxury of like, yeah, let's give him 20 games in the A uh, while you've got two guys playing. And then, like, there's no harm in having him push somebody out. Like, that's the yeah. progression. Want him to earn it. Believe me, yeah. in my career, I got, yeah, and I got pushed out several times as the True. backup. It's like, there's a kid coming. I've got one year left because this kid's taking me out. And then, you know, like, it's, it, to me, um, I would love to have, I would love Pierre or the management team to have real decisions at that position like they have in other positions, put it that way. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind seeing Mads another year in the minors. Obviously, waiver exempt still next year, so that's not a worry. And you can always go out and grab a a guy. We've seen that even as recently with Dylan Ferguson, but before the year, getting Magnus Helberg off waivers when uh, when they needed a spot start there. And they get another win. But Noodles, we we appreciate you so much for jumping on. Always a pleasure when we know that you're calling games on TSN. I got two final ones for you, and, and one is, Obviously, they're they're doing better than they have any time since the uh, since the 2017 playoff run. But what in particular makes this team more fun? I'd imagine to watch versus the years past. Is there one thing that you notice from your perspective, whether it's between the benches or up top, where either they're playing faster, everything's sharper, whatever it may be, that's the reason why they're they're just overall a better team. Two things: skill level. Okay, so like Stutzla is a hundred point guy in my opinion. I think Josh Norris is going to be a 40 goal scorer. I think Brady is now, you know, he's a point of game guy. You know, maybe he gets to 40 plus and maybe he can get to hundred points, but maybe he's a 90 point guy that is a pain in the ass to play against. And that's what I was going to say. So skill and structure and, and, you know, you guys heard Keith talking about it. Like, uh, I don't know if it was as recent as yesterday talking about Ottawa compared to his other son, awesome. Florida where like Ottawa's not soft because they've got some guys that got some jam. And when you've got a captain that goes, you know, I'll challenge the bench, I'll challenge anybody. Like Brady's a leader and he's a hell of a leader. So um, as many of friends and people, I certainly respected that 2017 run. This team is just built a little bit different because I think the high end skill is, is at another level. Like a guy like Claude Giroux is, been amazing like just kind of seeing him work day to day and stuff and then if, if they end up getting something done with a guy like the Brinkett, who I think is just settling in and can I even get back to that 40 goal uh threshold um with some luck as well too because early on I don't know if you guys remember like there were games where he had like seven shots on goal and he's hitting posts and oh, missing, missing open luck. nets yeah. and stuff so yeah so bad puck luck but I just I think they're more skilled and tougher to play against. So that, to me, that's what makes it exciting. And I don't know how you feel. Like I've been around so many NHL teams and I get the luxury to kind of go into the room and chat with guys. They're a likable bunch. Like that's, that's the other thing. There's other teams that I would term as prickly. You know, they're just not as easily approachable. There's not a, um, an air about them. And to me, it comes back to, again, management, uh, DJ and his coaching staff and, the leadership group of, of the senators, like they're a likable group from, you know, for me to deal with because they like a guy like, 
Brady just gets it. Like he just gets, like he knows he was brought up in the hockey environment. He, he treats people with respect. Uh, he plays hard. He's hard on himself when he knows he's pl- not playing well. Like he, he just, he just gets it. So I would say that this current version of the senators um, still scratching the surface. Cause I think they're on a trajectory heading in, in the right direction. Doesn't mean they still have to add some pieces and there might not be growing pains, but uh, they're, they're, I, I said this a while ago. I wholeheartedly believe this, you know, 18 months from now, it might be even a cycle of a year, but this team is going to be a serious, serious team uh, with the right pieces continue to add. But I think that next year that, you know, they would be a playoff team and even the following year, you know, like into that serious mode. So it's, it's to me, to me, they're in the right, they're heading in the right direction. Awesome. Well, all the fans deserve it. We also deserve to know what's on your playlist right now. I know you're a big music guy. We'll get you out of here on that. Give us some recos. Okay. So <laughs> this is bad because I'm 50 years old. So I go down these rabbit holes on, um, on YouTube. Okay. So, or I'll be, script, you know, sliding through like, um, what is that called? Instagram, like reels or whatever. And the other day, I don't know if you remember this band. You guys are way too young, but it was a band called Extreme. And there's a, you know, like the song called Wholehearted and More okay. Than Words. And guy, um, uh, the guitarist is Nuno is his name, Bellencourt. And he's this unbelievable guitarist. So if you look up the, the, the band Extreme, it's just two guys and an unbelievable singer and guitarist. But they were a very, very popular band in nice. the 90s. So I've kind of gone down a little re- extreme resurgence um and i mean you guys i think it's no secret like i i am very close friends with chad from nickelback i uh kind of grew up and so i spent some time with them at the junos recently when they went into the music hall of fame so um i've got a a little live version of their uh song those days downloaded i've I've, I've been listening to that that's right on the spotify too yeah yeah, so weird, funny story just before I go is um, they have also a song, song on that album called San Quentin. So I was at Chad's house like three years ago and he was like, hey, I got to play you this, you know, this nice. little tune. And he had, like the, he had like the chorus of it, but he had nothing else. And I like was always like harassing him. Like, dude, you got to finish San Quentin. Like, <laughs> I love that song. And then when he finished it, he FaceTimed me. He's like, hey, dude, listen. And then when he wrote those days, he FaceTimed me and was playing me, playing it. I'm like, that's a hit song. And so anyways, like I, it, I kind of have obviously biased a soft spot just with my friendship with the band and friendship with Chad for, you know, 20 years or more, actually more than 20 years. But, um, it, you know, I, I always kind of have one layer of their songs on there, but then I'll have Metallica and then I'll have like mainstream stuff. The only thing I'm not into is like, I'm not huge into hip hop, even though, like a lot of the tracks incorporate uh, nowadays, like other songs into them. So I should be more, but I just, uh, uh, you know, I, I literally am an extreme of music. So extreme <laughs> to Nickelback, to Bon Jovi, to Metallica. So I'm That's all over awesome, man. We appreciate that. That's great. Jamie, I can't thank you. You and your family have obviously been, uh, been huge in the success of this show as well. We appreciate you jumping on, making the show a little more handsome here now that it's your YouTube debut since we've jumped over to that. So, Oh, totally appre- oh yeah. I appreciate it. Always good to have some, some tendy love on the show as well. And we'll catch up with you this summer. Hey, eh? we'll, uh, we'll recap the send season and uh, get what's next with you as well. So always appreciate your time, man. All right, Pillsy final segment of the week. It's been another great week. Unlocked on Senators. It's been another great month of Locked on Senators. Another all time high. Most downloads in a single month. And the road to a million views on YouTube is underway. When we started this little channel, did you ever think a million YouTube views could be even possible? No, I don't think so. Yeah, the the big M, the big mill was uh, not on my radar. I'll, I'll be honest. And so we can't thank all the fans, all the viewers, all the listeners enough for your support and to continue to watch us on a daily basis. We love you guys. And when can they find us next here 
on Locked On Senators. Well, we're going to have a postcast, of course, for the Battle of Ontario. And then the business game in Columbus, Ohio. We will also have a postcast. So your team every day, Ross. We're hitting all seven days of the week this time. What is your favorite storyline heading into the weekend or most crucial storyline? It's got to be the, the next man up mentality, Ross. There's so, so many injuries on this team in the final stretch. Uh, Tom Shabbat going down was terrible. And then having Broussard and Hamnick likely out for the rest of the year as well. Who wants it? Who who wants it from this Ottawa Senators team that's ready to step up and take those minutes and show DJ Smith and management that they're ready for a different role or at least can be relied upon in an elevated role in a small sample size. So it's going to be very interesting to see which players shine in this final stretch, Ross. Well, Austin Watson showed he wanted it tonight, his ninth goal of the season. I think him getting 10 would be considered a success on his season, yeah. although he's working on a Cy Young season i know that baseball uh, is officially underway mlb eight goals or sorry nine goals two assists now uh, for austin watson in 71 games not but a disher not a disher not <laughs> a disher but for me it's that of course of course it's claude Giroux, thousand points but also you can't let the leafs win both games in your building this season you just can't do it and they got the win there two saturdays ago it was a hard-fought game for ottawa 52 shots on goal like that's that's a must-win game for me, whether it's playoffs or not. You got to beat the Leafs at home on an April first. Like it's April, and the games matter. The vibes were enormously high at the yeah. arena. Mark Mathot was there and mentioning, like, man, in that second period when things were getting wild against Philly, the crowd was just going crazy. So I want that same energy on Saturday night. Just play hard, play physical, and I'm I'm expecting a big one. So I, I'm I'm going the rivalry method here you spend it on saturday and then go try to take care of business in what should be a winnable game on sunday no matter what kind of injuries you have up and down the lineup agreed yep i agree with that ross any final thoughts on today's show pilsy it's been a great week as you mentioned seven days this week and we can't thank jamie noodles mclennan enough either because uh just an awesome dude and great insight i'm glad he gave us some perspective pilsy Yes, perspective is important, that's for sure. Uh, final thoughts for me is the season is winding down here and we're going to get a back-to-back weekend. Live it up. Have, get get all your Sens fans together. Get Meet with 18,000 of your closest friends at the CTC for this one. Head to the Glebe Central Pub to watch the game that's happening in Columbus. Just have fun enjoying the Ottawa Senators while we got them. Second last Saturday night game of the regular season. The final postcast Saturday of the regular season because we're going to be boots on the ground Saturday, April 8th at the Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa, Ontario, where new ownership looms large. We're not going to give you each single update, blah, 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 blah. It's just a little confusing, but it looked good that the NHL was promoting Ryan Reynolds being at the game. It would be foolish for them not to. But for more of that type of content, we did discuss all this in the postcast last night. So go check it out wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also follow the show on social media, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. And we're most active on Twitter at Send Central, where you'll be able to get updates when the Sends decide who they're going to call up on the blue line. Or could we just see a miraculous recovery of Jacob Chikrin? That would be very cool, but very unexpected as well. But we'll keep track of all that on Friday. Uh, let's get the good people here. The final word from the Sens communications team. They always do a good job of letting them know when they're off next. So the Senators are off today, off on Friday. They return to action 10.30 a.m. morning skate against the Toronto Maple Leaf. So stay tuned for all that. But for today, we say goodbye for Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan, and this has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.